Howdy there guys, Zelda42293 here, welcome back to another video of Love is Strange. In the last episode, we ended up giving Chloe her mixtape CD, and we ended up spending the night in her house. Um, it is now Thursday on Chloe's route, uh, we're gonna jump right in and read. I'm so jittery, I can barely pay attention in class. Every time the light shifts, I just get distracted thinking about what to do for the photo. When I should text Chloe, what kind of angle I want to take. Even if we don't win, this photo is going to be important to me and to Chloe. It's going to be the last thing we do together before she goes. It's going to be ours. I was almost late to class today anyway, which isn't helping my distraction. I forgot Chloe doesn't set alarms, of course. So I just woke up to Joyce yelling for me and Chloe's elbows in my face. She's... She'd only grumbled and rolled over when I untangled our legs, got dressed, and hurried out the door. So she's probably still asleep. Just as I think so, my phone buzzes. I have to wait for the teacher to turn around before I can check it. Meet me out front in ten minutes. In front of the school? Yes, Max, in front of the school. I look out the window a little anxiously. But of course she's not there. Knowing Chloe, she probably just rolled out of bed, waking and baking as I think about her. My class ends in 10 minutes. I have another one starting up in 20. I know that Chloe knows that. I don't know what she's planning yet, but whatever it is, it's probably something totally irresponsible. Something Joyce would shake her head disapprovingly at, at the very least. I shove my phone back into my pocket and I do my best to focus back in on the lesson. I'm too old for Chloe's shenanigans to be giving me butterflies. Chloe isn't out front when I hurry outside after class, so I'm stuck waiting for five minutes, checking between the road and the time and worrying about class and Chloe in regular intervals. I'm checking my phone for the fifth time when there are three sharp honks of a car horn, and I look up to see Chloe's truck parked in front of the academy steps, her, grin, her, her grinning at me from inside. Hey there! I hurry over, slipping my phone back into my pocket and folding my arms up on the gap left by the open window. Hey! Excited to see me? Naturally. <laughs> that just makes her grin wider at me, and I just smile back, leaning forward a little so there's less of a barrier between us. So what are you doing here? Chloe taps the steering wheel. Isn't it obvious? I'm here to whisk you away, princess. My heart speeds up a little. Whisk me away? To where? To our photo shoot, duh. Today's the big day, right? Well, yes, but, I mean, I've got class. Chloe makes a big show of groaning, leaning back against the seat and rolling her eyes. Max, are you seriously going to make me convince you to take photos? In what kind of fucked up backwards world, man? I giggled despite myself. Besides, you were all you were the one all worried about yesterday, about light and time and angles and shit. This will give you all the time you need to be an annoying perfectionist about it. You seriously want to ditch right now? You seriously don't? Chloe, I have class in right now, actually. You do too, if I remember correctly. You're honestly such a square. As I'm giggling at her your unironic use of square as an insult, she just rolls her eyes in my direction and goes on. Come on, dude. If there was ever a reason to cut class, it's to do this. You're pursuing your passion or whatever, right? Don't, be, don't pretentious art schools like Blackwell have an addentum that, that excuses absences if you're inspired or something? I doubt it. And your best friend who's leaving town tomorrow is telling you to. Well, and the sky is really pretty right now. Look, I don't know if she's being sincere or just teasing me, but when I tilt my head back to look at the sky, it is really pretty. A clear blue leaching out from the fading pinks and purples of early morning. I sigh. Alright, what the hell, let's go. Let's go then. Chloe raises an eyebrow, but reaches forward and unlocks the door anyway. 
Jeez, I thought you'd be a harder sell. I climb up into the truck, toss my bag underneath my feet. What made you think that? You always get so whiny whenever I try to get you to do something. What's the word you like? Delinquent, right? She pouts in my direction for show, and I laugh and shove at her shoulder. Who's whining? She chuckles, spinning her keys around one finger. I lean back and watch them circle. Besides, it's not like convincing me to be with you is that hard of a sell. The keys fly off her hand and hit the dash, and I flinch at the sound before glancing back at her in surprise. She'd winced then. The keys crashed against the car, too. But now she's just looking at me, a little wide-eyed. This time I really can't help but kind of get flustered. Honestly, Max, could you? Have, could that have sounded more gay? <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, no, no, I get it. I know. I'm irresistible. Among other things. All good things, though. I just chuckle, unable to deny it, and reach down to get her keys back for, for her. She turns the car on, the truck kicking a few times before rearing into action. All right, let's bail, before the dog freaks. I'm sure they'll understand. I mean, the deadline was so short. I bet tons of people are scrambling. Dude, who cares? You are officially... She pauses for a few seconds, just long enough to pull out of the academy property. Off Blackwell grounds. God, living at the school must really fuck with your head. No worrying about class or deadlines or homework for the rest of the day, alright? If you say so. Nope, you're the one in charge here, Max. You're calling the shots. Oh, get it? Calling the shots? It's like a photo pun. Hmm, <laughs> you're hilarious. I know. Anyway, I wanted to say I'm not going to worry about I'm not going to worry about class or deadlines or homework for the rest of the day. Okay, okay, I won't. Word for word. I just roll my eyes, trying not to giggle. I fail. <laughs> Isn't paraphrasing good enough? Chloe scoffs. Then suddenly the truck slows to what's basically a crawl. Chloe leans back lazily against the seat, looking at me sideways. I mean, it is, I guess it's possible, but, but so is, you know, reaching our destination two hours from now. Chloe! I'm not going to worry about class or, or deadlines or... You're such a pain in the ass. I end up, living, I end up having to deliver it through giggles. I'm not going to worry about class or deadlines or homework for the rest of the day. Happy? And my best friend Chloe Price is going to have my undivided attention. Chloe, of course you would say that. I smile at her, leaning back against the seat. And my best friend Chloe Price is going to have my undivided attention. She grins back at me, revving the car back up for what's probably a little above the speed limit. And also... I'm finally going to admit she's the hottest person I've ever in your dreams. <laughs> Chloe's got a crush. <laughs> she laughs, high and pleased, and I smile, facing forward again and settling farther down into the cracked leather. After being in silence for a minute, I finally recognize the slightly tiny music coming out of Chloe's car studio. Oh? It's a song I had put on Chloe's CD. One of mine that I had hoped she would like. She glances over at me curiously when I speak, then looks back at the stereo. I didn't want to. I didn't want to have to wait to listen to it. That's okay. I mean, that's totally. Do you like it? I love it. You got good taste after all. Buried under horrible fashion sense. Ugh, you suck. When I glance back at her, though, she's just smiling at me again. It might be the sunlight reflecting, but her eyes seem so soft. Thanks, Max. I just blink at her for a second, then smile back. You're welcome. Alright, enough of this mushy shit. Let's get this show on the road. She brings, up, she brings us up ten miles over the speed limit, and we're really on our way. God, I love the chemistry between Max and Chloe. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see them kiss if they kiss in this ending, because I know there's different endings in this 
in this game. Anyways, after we get to the lighthouse, we end up spending way more time fooling around than working. Of course. Come on, Max. The buried treasure's got to be around here somewhere. We've been looking for ages. Dude, where is your sense of adventure? I lost it like ten minutes ago, along with a sense of feeling in my feet. She laughs and turns to face me again, pouting dramatically. You're such a baby. Whatever. Come here. We can take a break. She slumps down, graceless, to sit at the foot of the lighthouse, and gestures for me to join her. A little relieved, I hurry over and slide down next to her, my knees tenting next to her cross legs. Why didn't Tiny, Max, and Chloe make a map or something? Jeez. Uh, because they were morons? She runs a hand through, she runs a hand through her hair, Benini toppling into my lap. The sun's starting to go down and light catches on her. The peach fuzz of her arms, her eyes, her edges making her luminescent. It's impossible to look away. If we don't find it today, finding that damn box is becoming a campaign, alright? Not without you. I pull my knees in a little closer to my chest. Mm hmm. We'll start as soon as you come back. Come on, I'm not gonna hold you back from treasure hunting dreams. No way. Together or not at all. It's not going to be special if I find it without you. I glance sideways at her and she's looking back at me. She looks pleased, but there's a strange sort of guardedness in her face, too. I looked for it when you were gone. It takes me a second to understand what she means, that she looked for it after I'd moved away. My throat tightens a little bit. Oh. I wasn't able to find it. There's something so delicate in her face. It makes me look like a kid again, for a moment, like the Chloe I first met. Well, that just confirms we have to find it together, or it's no good. The fragility in her face melts into a grin, and I can't help but grin back, relieved and so, so happy to see her smile. Together or not at all. Got it. We just sit here for, there for a minute, against the lighthouse, looking at each other and grinning like idiots. Anyway, shouldn't we be moving along with the day? You were the one who was all worried about the light or whatever. She's right. The way the light is spilling in a rainbow over the horizon of the sea is especially beautiful right now. But I know it's not going to last very long. Still, I hesitate. She notices and nudges me lightly with her elbow, pulling her hat back on with the other hand. I know that face. What's up? I just, I sigh, and she looks at me carefully before pulling her knees up and leaning forward on them. Just tell me. Well, I'm, I'm still just kind of worried about you. Apparently that's not the right thing to say because Chloe just rolls her eyes, looking away and leaning further to, forward on her knees. God, not this shit again. Chloe, I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, I fucking know you're serious. Don't worry about me. My mom worries about me. Rachel worries about me. Everyone's so goddamn worried. Chloe, it's because we care about you. Yeah, and you all think I'm a fuck-up. There's a crease in her forehead, but it's true what I'm saying. I'm not worried about her because I don't think she can take care of herself. It's because she's my best friend. Chloe, it's not that. But I don't have time to say it. She moves onto her feet before I can even finish my sentence. Whatever. Let's just do this, alright? Daylight's dying, or whatever the phase is. Okay, let's do it. She grins at me, offering a hand to help me up. Rad. Once we're both on our feet, though, she looks a little listless, looking around uncertainly. Okay, alright. How do you want me, Max? She waggles her eyebrows a little, and I giggle and roll my eyes, turning in a slow circle to survey the landscape. Don't get too excited yet. <laughs> okay, I think... Could you go stand next to the bench over there? Towards the cliff edge, actually? That gets a semi-skeptical look, 
even as she starts moving forward toward the edge, with me trailing after her. This isn't going to end up like some episode of Law and Order, is it? Chloe, unfortunately, I really think shoving you off a cliff would cause more problems than it would solve. Ha, <laughs> that's comforting. Eventually, she comes to stand in place, and I move from side to side, in angles behind her, trying to find the best light, where the shadows fall tang tangent to her body. She watches me over her shoulder, amused and curious. Finally, I pause the sky exploding into soft purples and blues on either side of Chloe, the sun and sea on her right and Arcadia Bay tiny on her left. Chloe at the crux, balancing between them like Balancing them between her like she's what's holding them all together. Perfect. Thanks. I grin at her, then pull out my camera, do my best to line up with what the shot with the sh what the shot I'm seeing in my head with reality, still shuffling in tiny tiny steps from left to right. It's kind of dark. She just grins at me again, exasperated. Well, damn, Max, I can't control the weather. I lower the camera in front, taking a few steps side to side again, before ending up back in place. Okay, um, do you think you could take off your jacket and hat? She raises an eyebrow, eyebrow at me, grinning, then starts shrugging off her jacket. Your seduction taxes are taking the oh, your seduction taxes, bleh, I can't speak. Your seduction tactics are a little lacking in subalidity, Caulfield. She drops her beanie on my head and tugs the jacket over my shoulders, pulling me forward a few steps closer to her. Cute. Kind of big on me, Chloe. And warm. Smells like cigarettes and spearmint. That's what makes it cute. <laughs> okay, great. Stay right there. Got it. But just so you know, my neck's going to get kind of stiff if I hold this too long. That's not my fault. You have awful posture. I'm framing the picture, though, through the lens. Chloe's back to me, facing the horizon, which she turns back to look at me. A sardonic sort of half-smile on her face. You love it. The shutter goes off in a flash, in a series of clicks, only half on purpose and half on instinct. I pull the photo free, a little surprised by it, then give it to, give it a shake. Oh. What? Does it look okay? I'm just staring at it, and she comes over in short, quick strides to peer over my shoulder, running one hand through her hair. If you don't like the first one, we still have time. I know you're not. I know you're a perfectionist or whatever, but it doesn't have to be just right the first time. It's amazing. <laughs> I hear her movement pause behind me, and the shift in warmth as she leans closer. You think so? Absolutely. Look. I hold it up a little bit, and her chin looks over my shoulder, staring down at it. I hold myself very still, looking at it myself. Wow, that is a good shot. Chloe, dark and beautiful and bare-armed, framed between a town that's growing smaller and the horizon growing larger, her tattoo and the sky splitting open in colors. Are you sure? Her voice is weirdly uncertain, and it makes me feel tentative, even in the face of such a beautiful shot. I glance over at her, and our cheeks brush before she lifts her face slightly expression conflicted. I mean, it's just... it's just... She glances at me, quickly and she's going to look away, but I hold her gaze. Partners in crime, Chloe. Come on, what is it? I mean, it's nothing, it's just, it's just me. At first I don't understand. She jerks her head impatiently at the photo, and it clicks. Oh. What are you talking about? It's gorgeous. You're gorgeous. Chloe glances at me, sudden and sharp, and I nearly falter before she just snorts, looking away again. Gay. <laughs> I mean it, Chloe. I lean a little to catch her gaze again, and reluctantly she meets my eyes. 
I really like it. I really do. But you're my subject and my partner. If you're not crazy about it, then we keep going. It's super rare to use the first shot in a project anyway. She glances at me again, and there's still a trace of a frown on her face, but something softer in her eyes. Something vulnerable. I like the photo. You do? Yeah. I open my mouth, just to make sure, but she keeps going before I can say anything. She just keeps talking. I wanted to ask you something. That immediately sets me on edge, despite myself. The last time Chloe wanted to talk to me about something at the lighthouse, she told me she was leaving. Max, how do you feel really feel about me leaving? I'm going to miss you, Chloe. How I feel about it? My hands twist a little on my bag strap, and Chloe's eyes flick down to watch them ring there. Yeah, be honest. Honest. Well, I'm going to miss you. When I looked up again, she was just staring at me, intent. I can't read her face, and it makes me feel anxious. The idea that Chloe and I are growing farther apart, even as we stand here. I know I said that before, and I, I know I said I was happy for you, and I want to be, and I am, mostly, but it's just that you're my best friend. I love you. I'm going to miss you. Something flickers in her gaze, and for a minute she just holds mine. There for a moment. Then she huffs, looking away, and touching briefly at her nose. I love you too. I nod a little shaky and wait for the rest of the response. Something about how she'll come back eventually, or how pirates are forever, or how we're bonded for life. That's it, though. She holds her hand out to me, and I take it. So you like the photo? Yeah, I really do. Good. I do too. So I guess our work here is done? The stone is dipping beneath the ocean now. Couldn't stop it if I wanted to. Work here is done. Uh, what was our time like? Uh, we can do Friday. I don't think Friday is very long. I don't think I've ever been this jittery in my life. I came to class really early, mostly because of nerves, but there were already a lot of people there. I guess I'm not the only one anxious about submitting their photo. But no, Chloe. For a second, it doesn't really faze me, because Chloe's always late. You know, typical Chloe. But when I remember Friday is Chloe's last day in Arcadia, and I have no idea when she's leaving. What if she's already... Max! Ah! Dude, you were totally zoned out. Ugh, you startled me, asshole. Yeah, that was pretty obvious. You had your nervous face on anyway, though, so I figured, what's the harm? I was nervous. You already skipped town, jerk. Chloe's eyebrows raise as she falls back on her heels a little, hands in her pockets. What? Max, no way. I'm still owed several overdramatic goodbyes. Also, as if I'm going to let you run the victory lap all by yourself. Before I can warn her that there might not be a victory lap, she keeps talking, reaching idly towards the back of her neck. Anyway, I needed to give you this. I don't realize what she's doing until she pulls her necklace over her head, bringing it down into one hand and stringing it out with the other. Oh, Chloe... You really don't have... Shut up. I want to. Anyway, it's for luck. She motions for me forward, and I step into her space a little shy. She loops it over my head with both hands, tucking my hair gently out from under the string as it passes. Her gaze is weirdly focused, following the necklace as it goes past my throat, my collarbone coming to rest around my sternum cool, and surprisingly heavy. I feel like I've been staring at her face too long. <laughs> Thanks. No problem. For a second, she just lingers there, face loose and light near, near where the bullets lie, low close to my ribs. 
We feel we're really close together. I still haven't looked away from her face. Then she falls back again, looking back up at me and grinning. Chloe, stop teasing me. Just kiss me already. <laughs> now we're definitely going to win. I've done my contribution. Your contribution was way bigger than the bullet necklace, Chloe. Even though I really appreciate it, like majorly. I just... Just what? When I hesitate, she rolls her eyes and steps forward again, tilting my chin up slightly with two fingers so our eyes meet. Out with it. I just don't want to let you down. I mean, before I can go on, her fingers leave my chin and flick my forehead, light but sudden. Not possible. Max, I told you before, I don't give a shit about the contest. Well, I mean, I do, because you care about it. But I just wanted us to hang out and have a good time, and have you be happy with the photo. And we did, and you are, right? Her, smile, her expression is genuinely questioning, and I stand up a little straighter, smile at her because, yeah, after all, she's right. Yeah, I'm happy. She brightens up, then ruffles my hair, grinning when I squawk and push her away. Good. Me too. Well, I think someone wants to talk to you, so I'll catch you in class. Get your running shoes on for the victory lap, Max. Do some stretches. You do some stretches. She laughs, easing her way into the classroom in languid, carefree movements, and I watch her go, a little knot in my belly. I really don't want her to go. It's an awful cliché thing, having a crush on your best friend. What does this week really prove to me that I can't deny or ignore the way I feel about Chloe? She's the most important person in my life. And now it's probably way too late to tell her. I don't know if I'd have the courage to even, if the time was running out, if the time wasn't running out. I just want to be with her for a little longer, at least. Uh. Hey, Max. Hey, Kate. How have you been? I'm okay. You don't sound so sure. I'm fine, really. It's just been a hectic week with the contest. I know what you mean. Chloe and I have been busy, too. She was really determined to help me out. That's so sweet. And if, if anybody can motivate Chloe, it's you, Max. And it looks like she's really the only one here who's not nervous about the results. Chloe's just mastered the art of looking like she doesn't give a shit. She is good at that. How are you feeling, Max? Still kind of nervous. It was a lot of fun, though, hanging with Chloe so much. And thanks to her, we got an awesome photo. At least, I hope it's good enough. I have no doubt. All your photos turn out great. Chloe tells me the same thing, but I don't know. You just need to have faith in yourself, Max. I know I do. I can always count on you for that. So you better trust Chloe when she says it, too. You two make a perfect team. I think so, too. We've always been close. I can tell. I hope it stays that way. Yeah, I hope so, too. I don't think you have anything to worry about. Anyway, class is about to start. Maybe we can grab a cup of tea later. If you're not too busy. Never too busy for you, Kate. I promise. Uh, Rachel. Not gonna lie, I'll be glad when this contest is over. I think I can guess why. I totally thought that you and Chloe being busy all week would give me all this time to just hang out with my other friends. Because you know how Chloe just hates the Vortex Club's guts. Anyway, I thought it would be a cool chance to chill with them for a few days, but I'm already so sick of them all. I've been way too overexposed. It was so much better when I was just partying with them. They're surprisingly unfun sober. That's not surprising at all. True that. So what's Chloe's ransom? Should I deliver it in a suitcase? What's the drop-off point? 
you know Chloe's priceless. <laughs> Pun intended. You know, I know, I'm just teasing. I'm actually really glad you guys have had this contest to work on together. It makes me happy to see Chloe so happy. And nothing makes her happier than you do. Do you really think so? Max, I know it. When I met Chloe, she was in a really rough place. But no matter how hard things were before were, were for her, every single time she talked about you, it was like power's on, all the lights went up inside her. Maybe she's awful at showing it sometimes, but you're irreplaceable. I'd know. Well, you're really important to her too, Rachel. Yeah, but in a different way. A different way? Oh, really cute, Max. I don't think I get it. If you don't know now, you will soon. Let's all hang out together soon, just the three of us. I've got some big news to share and I've been dying to spill it. Now you're talking sense. I'll catch you guys later. What do you want, Max? Wow, Victoria, maybe I just wanted to see how the contest was going for you. Wanted to see my winning submission, you mean? It's okay. No one is going to hold it against you when you lose. You're right, no one is. Chloe and I tried our best, and that's what matters. Oh god, I almost forgot you were working with Price. How did it feel having to work with an aspiring junkie? Don't talk about her like that. I'm only calling it as I see it, but I'm not surprised you haven't, with how grossly starry-eyed starry -eyed you are. Ugh, you're awful. I don't know why I bother. You don't know a thing about Chloe, so just quit it. You're right, I don't. And I don't plan to. Being exposed to that world would only give, would only give me a headache. Shut up, Victoria. Chloe's better than you'll ever be. Real fucking hurtful, Max. Boo-hoo. If I'm such a chore to talk to, get the hell out of my face. Fine, I will. Alright, alright. I know you're all excited, but I need to have you all seated. Have I got everyone's photos? Everyone's eyes are on Mr. Dog as they shuffle through the photos spread out on the desk. I'm really impressed by the amount of students you have entered this year. I'm only ha about half of every class has put an entry in. And now with these, I can finally start deliberations. Lucky for you all, that means you can use this period to study. The hum of chatter starts up immediately. Quietly. And then dies down with some protests and groans. I'm kind of thankful for the opportunity. I put my head down and open my textbook. But although I try to focus, it's pretty hard. I guess Chloe and I aren't the only ones hoping to win. It feels like the longest hour of my life. Every time Mr. Dog moves at, the de at his desk, I think he's about to announce the winners. And I jump a little. When they finally do stand up, clipboard in hand, I go rigid in my seat. I catch Chloe's gaze, she grins at me, and then nods a little bit in encouragement. She doesn't look nervous at all, just supportive and satisfied, like we've already won. Goodness, this was so difficult! I know that the deadline was short, and that a lot of you devoted much of your free time this week to your entry. I truly wish I could have awarded more than one winner. The theme of the contest, Bonds, was a broad concept, and I'm thrilled to see so many different interpretations of it here. That's what photography is all about. Personal expression, showing the world the way you see things. That said, there is one entry in particular that truly embraced this theme. This photo represents to us the dignity of the human spirit, framed by the photographer as simultaneously transcendial to civilization and paltry against the cosmos. My heart skips a beat. Or ten. There's no way he, they're talk, he's talking about our photo. The unique vision of this novice photographer makes me think that we'll see some amazing things from them in the future. 
and hopefully they'll continue collaborating with their partner. So I'm extra pleased to announce that the winners of the second annual Blackwell Photo Contest are Maxine Caulfield and Chloe Price. Congratulations! The room erupts in applause and cheers, and I'm frozen in my seat for a moment, letting comprehension catch up with the rest of my body. I'm only just managing to get onto my feet when Chloe's by my side, pulling me up by the hand and grinning so hard it looks like it hurts. You fucking won! She pulls me up by the arms, by the upper arms, almost off my feet, and crushes a kiss between my eyes, hard enough to almost hurt. Vaguely, I'm aware of Rachel Wolf whistling behind us, but my senses are pretty much completely overlaid by shock and by Chloe beaming and bright and right in front of me. I'm dizzy when she sets me back onto my feet, clutching at her elbows, and she grins at me, just pure delight. Oh my god, we fucking won. She crowds with she crows with laughter, reaching down to squeeze both my hands. What did I fucking tell you? You're amazing! The bell rings, and the class starts to filter out. The two of us are swept with congratulations and slaps in the back for a few moments, Then, after some brief conversation with Rachel and Kate, it's just the two of us again. I can't believe this. I can? Max, I knew you'd win. And you did, because no one can even compare to your photography chops. She's so excited. My cheeks actually hurt from smiling now. We won, Chloe. There's no way I could have done this without you. That just makes her smile softer, fonder, and she reaches down to squeeze one of my hands. Thanks, Max. I'm really, really proud of you, though. I'm just... I'm glad we won. It's stupid, but I re am really glad. I want to better articulately, articulate it. How, how I'm glad that Chloe will have this memory, that we're parting on a victory. That hopefully, this will make her remember us first and foremost as an unbreakable bond. <clears throat> but before I can, she just squeezes my hand again. It's not stupid. I totally get it. <clears throat> and you know what? We should go celebrate. You. We should go celebrate you. Right now. I'm going to take you somewhere. My eyes go a little wider. I can't help it. The sun's already winding outside. I don't know what Chloe's planning for an exit time, but logically I know she c I shouldn't keep her, her here and make her leave at rush hour. Right now? Right now. She looks so intent, though, and I'd be an awful liar if I even tried to pretend I didn't want to monopolize her time. Okay, well, let's go. That brings her chin back up to full luminosity, and she reaches for my other hand and squeezes that one-two before slinging an arm over my shoulders. Awesome! Max and Chloe taking their final victory lap around Arcadia Bay after all. You better not make me run anywhere. No chance. I'm driving anyway. She pulls me a little more firmly into her side, and I can't help but lean against it. The warm and familiar way of her. <clears throat> okay, let's just go for a drive. <clears throat> You keeping your eyes closed? Yes, but... No buts! I'll tell you when to open. So I keep them shut. I think I'm starting to get an idea of where we're headed, though. The air smells salty. A few moments later, the truck slows to a stop, and I hear Chloe get out. Then, come around to the other side to open my door, taking both my hands and gently guiding me out. Okay. Open. I could hear the rush of the waves already. But I still smile when I open my eyes and see the ocean there, and Chloe beaming in front of it. <clears throat> hmm. The sky's so pretty. That just makes her grin wider. All for you? I made a few calls. To the light pollution police? <laughs> yep. Uptight sons of bitches, but I guess they have a sense of atmosphere. I laugh, and she knows too a moment later. Without looking away from my face, I try to stay focused on her. And the sea, too. I know if, I'm lo if I look behind me, I'm going to see her throw truck, socked for leaving. Her necklace feels heavy against my sternum. Suddenly, I reach for it. I should give this back to you. Definitely served its purpose as a good luck charm. <clears throat> she looks at me in mild surprise, then startles when she sees me start to pull it over my head, immediately reaching out to press it back down onto my throat. What? 
No, Max. I'm giving it to you. Anyway, the necklace and luck had nothing to do with winning the contest. That was all you. She smiles at me again, easy and fond, and my heart squeezes in my chest a little. Absolutely not, Chloe. Chloe, I told you there is no way I would have been able to do this when, to win this without you. She huffs a little, taking a step ba away from me, backwards, and I lose her gaze for a second. <clears throat> Max, thanks. But I was a prop. A really hot prop, though. Sure. But seriously, Chloe, this picture wouldn't exist without you. And I mean, not just because you're in it. I said it before, photography is all about... She cuts across me, sudden looking, suddenly looking at me again. Emotions, right? I'll falter for a second, but her expression is serious, not solemn. I nod a little bit, suddenly feeling a little shy. Aw, Max is shy. Yeah, and I mean, I don't... I pause again. The words, I don't feel about anyone the way I feel about you, are on the tip of my tongue. But I glance back, and there are a lot of boxes in the back of her truck. You mean a lot to me, obviously. Her lips cork, but she just nods, still just watching me. I feel kind of small under her gaze, uncertain in a way I hate. An entire week to prepare, and I still have no idea what to say to her. I'm still not ready. I'm really glad we did this together. She nods again, coming over a few steps to stay next to me. My head tilts, but I don't turn to face her full on. I just keep staring out at the ocean. The photo? Oh, well, yes, but spending the week together, too. I know you must have had so much going on with Rachel and Joyce and getting ready to go and... Thank you, I guess. You made a lot of time for me. The sun's setting. Golden hour. Both of us awash in soft yellow light. Chloe's got her hands braced against the hood of her truck. <clears throat> it's an awful, cheesy thought to have, but briefly, I'm relieved that Chloe and I get to have the same sunset again this last time. I wasn't making time for you. You're my best friend. I want to be with you. Her voice sounds delicate against the roaring of the waves a few feet away. Firm, but fallible. I glance sideways at her to find she's already looking at me, unblinking and unreadable. I'm not sure who moves first, but a moment later, we're hugging fiercely, her arms tight around my shoulder and mine around her waist. She smells the same as she always does, smoke and leather and some kind of sharply clean scent, tinged with the salt of the sea. I breathe her, her in, trying to commit it to memory. I really, really don't want to cry, but I really don't think I can help it at this point. There's no way she'll be able to blame me if I do. I'm going to really miss you, Chloe. I want to say more. I want her to promise me she'll text me every day and tell her how I'll be thinking about her all the time and how I want her to be happy most of all. But my voice cracks on you, and I have to stop before I even start. She brings one hand up and ruffles my hair. Soft before running her fingers through it, and trailing down the back of my neck slow. I shiver a tiny bit and hug her tighter. Absence makes the heart grow fonder or whatever, right? I laugh, a little damply, and I'm about to say I can't be any fonder of her than I already am, but she keeps talking. By the time I get back, you'll be, you'll be totally in love with me. I, st I go still before I can stop myself and immediately try to relax again before she notices, but I don't move fast enough. Her hands move to my shoulders and she holds me out. Just to look at me. She's not frowning, but her gaze is intense, and I wince. Good job keeping it together, Max. Max. Chloe. Come with me. We just stare at each other. Wait, oh. We just stare at each other for what must have been at least a minute. Then I sputter. What? Come with me, Max. Her fingers are digging into my shoulders and still hasn't even blinked. I'm just stunned. Sure, there's a step in this conversation that I've missed. Are, are you serious? 
come with you, like, on your trip? Yeah. Her grip loosens on some of my sh- on s- her grip loosens up some on my shoulders, but she keeps holding on to me. Her face is half in the shadow from the sunset, but there's uncertainty creeping into the half I can see. I know it's last minute, but I laugh a little hysterically, and it gets a tiny smile to curl on her cheeks for a moment before she continues. But like, I have some extra duffel bags, and you're way more organized than I am. And I chalked in a few extra hours to get you ready when I was counting for driving time, so... So if you wanted to, you could. We could. She looks so tentative, but her hands are so firm on my shoulders. I'm still totally caught off guard. Still dazed, but... You're not joking? Our eyes meet up again, unyielding, and for a moment, I expect her to do this Chloe thing and quip. Lighten up the mood. But she only nods biting her lip. No, I'm not. I was thinking about, you know, asking you at the beginning of the week, but you were all excited about the contest thing, and I didn't want to freak you out. So you thought telling me you were leaving forever would make me less freaked out? My voice is awful, shrill, and young, and I can't help but laugh at the sound of it, in a series of short, nervous giggles. Chloe laughs along with me. Eyes never leaving my face, even as she lets go of my arms. Sorry. I also was worried about... Well, I wasn't worried totally, I just wasn't sure. She falters for a second and looks away, and I roll forward on my heels, a little to meet her eyes again. As a motion, her gaze turns back to my face, and she swallows. I didn't know if you'd want to go. Go with me. Be with me. Oh. Oh. Do you want to? This is such a Chloe thing to do. Impulsive and completely unexpected and passionate. And it catches me so off guard I can't help responding instinctual. Yes. Her her eyebrows shot up, shoot up so high I can't see them past her hairline. I giggle, nervous and completely shocked at myself. What the hell are you saying, Max? This is so not like you. You really want to? But then I look back at her in an expression I've never seen on Chloe in my whole life. Stunned and apprehensive and hopeful and tentative all at once. I feel like my heart could burst open for her. Yeah, I want to go. I want to be with you. She blinks once, twice, and her lips tug up for just a second before her face bunches in worrying again. Are you... Are you sure? Like, you've got school and all your photography stuff, and and I know it's super important to you, and I know you, like, have other friends other than me, and I mean, I'm not so sure if you... Do you want me to come or not? She cuts herself off with a surprised breath, breathy laugh, and just blinks again, waits for me to speak again. Her eyes are big and bright. First of all, Do you know how many Blackwell students have skipped town in the middle of the year to go seek enlightenment? It's basically a rite of passage to becoming a real artist. She snorts, but she still looks incredulous, watching me intense and quiet. Besides, I like the idea of doing something impulsive, something an actual professional good photographer would do. You already are good. Second of all, you're super important to me. More than any... Her eyebrows shoot way up, and I immediately stop myself back up. This is a good moment, but it's a delicate one. I can't mess this up. I want this to happen. I want to be with her. I want to come with you. Let me come with you. There is a moment of stillness in between us, almost long enough to make me nervous. Then her face cracks open in a smile so big, it's like she just can't contain it. Are you serious? I grin happily, I grin back, still feeling a little shocked at myself, but mostly just stupidly happily. Are you serious? She laughs in complete delight and sweeps me up in a hug again, lifting me off my feet and spinning me around. I'm laughing too, too much to tell her to put me down, so instead I just wrap my arms around her neck. She sets me back down on my feet after a minute, after a moment. But she keeps her arms around my waist, her face is close as she starts chattering excitedly. 
Okay, okay, so, so, so we need to stop by your dorm. I can help you with, well, with anything, with everything. We should probably stop by my house again to grab the clothes you have there, and, God, we should probably tell Rachel, and she stops herself, probably because she ran out of air, and just grins at me, breathless. I grin back, and I feel light, like the sun is shining right through me. And her voice falters a little, and she reaches up with one hand to brush some eyes, slightly see swept hair out of my eyes. Her hand lingers there, for longer than probably necessary, and we're just looking in each other's eyes, and I can't help but notice that her hand is shaking just a bit. The adrenaline rush from her saying yes is still pumping through me. And that's what gets me rolling up onto my toes, gripping her waist a little more firmly for balance, and pressing my lips onto hers, soft. Ah! She stiffens up a little bit, and inhales sharply through her nose, and I immediately pull away, immediately spooked, not sure if this reaction is just surprise, or also horror. Which, considering I'm hardly a paragon of experience, and could be totally botching this, is entirely plausible. But when I look up again, the only emotic emotion I can read from her face is pure shock. Fuck. Um, I mean... She makes at me once, twice, then laughs. Her laughing startles me for a second, and I go to pull away from her, but her grip on my hips just goes tighter, and she reels me back in. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the best ending. I barely have any time to react before she kisses me again, falling a few steps back so she's leaning against the hood of the truck, me flush against her. Oh, I wasn't wrong. Chloe actually... She really... She kisses me for a long moment, for almost longer than I'm ready for, but I just stand on my toes, do my best to kiss her back despite surprise and inexperience and overwhelming relief. I'm pretty sure she only pulls away in order to breathe, but even then she keeps her eyes shut, our foreheads together. I'm staring, though, searching her, her face framed between my hands. <clears throat> she looks so gentle. She looks happy. Chloe. She just laughs and shakes her head a little bit, eyes still closed, just glowing. Max, uh, what? Even I'm surprised by how soft my voice is. She just breathes out another laugh. I totally was going to kiss you. I'm fucking furious. It was also, it was going, going to be so romantic, and you beat me to it. I blinked for a second, then burst out laughing. It's so Chloe, needlessly competing over something so sweet. Was it going to be more romantic than literally asking me to run away with you? Uh... It was going to be more romantic than saying yes to running away with me, but tragically, you messed it up for yourself. My cheeks hurt from smiling. The sun is so warm on my back. Chloe's hands are warm, are warm on my waist and firm. That's disappointing. It is. It really is. But, you know, I'm willing to make a, a press back up to kiss her again, and she giggles against my mouth before leaning back in, pulling me even closer to her. The sun's going down. By the time we get back to the dorms, pack all of my things, get in touch with Joyce and Rachel and my parents, and get on the road, traffic will probably be hell. But that's alright. Chloe and me, we have all the time in the world. Well, that's it, guys. That's it for the uh, Chloe route. Um, I'm going to cut it off here. Uh, like, favorite, and subscribe. Um, Next time, I will be starting the Kate route. Um, I'm not going to go through the intro again. I'll just load up my save file from the character choices. Um, but until then, my name is Zelda42293. Thank you again. I know this video was a little bit longer than intended. I apologize. Uh, but uh, I will see you all in the next video.